This video is picking up right where the previous video left off. We're still in part 110, chap 12.11.m. Link to that document is in the video description. All the code that I'm going to show you in this video is going to work exactly in Octave as it works here in MATLAB. And we're going to be talking about cell arrays. I've touched on cell arrays briefly throughout this video series, but let's actually dive into it in a little bit more detail. Cell arrays are useful for storing a mixture of data types in a single variable. With regular vectors, matrices, arrays, you can't have text data alongside numeric data. But with cell arrays, you can. So here I create a variable A. It's just a vector 1, 2, 3 of doubles. Here I create a variable B. It's, got a, it's a vector of characters, A through G. And here I create a matrix of single type variables uh, with two rows and three columns. It's just the numbers 1 through 6. I can put all three of those types of variables together in a single variable using cell arrays. I have named my cell array celery because I think I'm funny and because there's no particular context to this other than doing a cell array example. So I'm going to keep naming my cell array celery unless I have a better variable name to use. And the way I do it is I set celery equal to curly brackets a comma b comma c. And now celery is a cell array uh, containing three different values. And this is how they display out when I use DISP. You will notice curly brackets. And also that the two by three matrix is kind of just summarized rather than displaying its values. So it's quite like a regular vector or matrix, except I'm using the curly brackets. And when I try to access or when I want to access a value from the cell array, I use also curly brackets rather than parentheses. So I run that line and there we go. I use the curly bracket one to get access to the first value or set of values in my cell array, which is this vector. I can do sort of a double indexing here by using curly brackets to get the second element out of the cell array, followed by parentheses four to get the fourth element out of that vector. Now I just kind of a little bit gave it away, but try and take a guess before I give the answer, pause the video, what is this going to display out? And then do the same thing right here. Now you better pause it fast. I'm going to give the answer in three, two, one. It's going to be the letter D for this section, because what's the second element of the cell array? It's this vector here. What's the fourth element of that vector? It's the D right there. All right, how about this one? Three, two, one, go. It's going to be the number three. And specifically, it is this three right here. Right, so the third element of the cell array, followed by row one, column three, gives that value right there. All right, continuing on down. Here's just a couple different ways of doing the same thing. So here I create a cell array. I say at position one, I wanna put this matrix. I think this is the better way to do it, but I also wanted to demonstrate that we could use parentheses so long as we use curly brackets as well as the square brackets over here. This just requires though more types of brackets, like literally parentheses, curly brackets, and square brackets. So that seems like too much to me. I don't think that's a good way to do it. We can pre-allocate cell arrays using the cell built-in MATLAB function. So this right here is a built-in MATLAB function. Reminder, pre-allocation is just simply where we say, hey, MATLAB, reserve enough space in memory for us to put some data in before we start putting the data in so that there's not a lot of copying from one memory location to another if our vector or matrix grows. So here we can just create right away a one row, three column cell array from this, and then we can put values into it. So at position one, we can put in the letter G. At position two, in the third position, we can put a four. So what's gonna be in those other two positions? Well, let's run it. It'll just be filled in with zeros. The way it would be with a normal vector, right? If I just said A parentheses at position three equals four, I would get a vector, zero, zero, four. And that's exactly what happened with the cell array. Now, what about the third position in the cell array, right? I pre-allocated three spaces. What happens with that one? Well, it just defaults to being an empty matrix of doubles. And I can access these values the same as I showed before, just using the curly brackets to get the second value. And I can copy that into a new variable if I like. And there is the result there. And later on, if I want, I can put a matrix into that third position that I reserved earlier. So there I do it. And so now it's not an empty, it's not a zero by zero double, it's a three by three double. 
and I can index into my Celerate into that matrix using different sets of brackets. So curly brackets to index into the Celerate, row two, column three to index into the corresponding matrix, the matrix at that third position. DISP will display the uh, Celerate values, but it might not display them in the way that we want. Here is how DISP displays the values that I just put into Celery. And there's a different built-in MATLAB function named CellDisp. And again, this works in Octave as well. So CellDisp will display out our Celerate in this fashion. So it doesn't just summarize that matrix down there. It actually displays out the values just like that. And one way in which cell arrays are useful, uh, and we've actually kind of seen them behind the scenes and not really gone into the details, is for variable argument functions. So functions that can take different number of inputs. So I have this function named test1, and I'm going to call it with zero inputs. And then I'm going to call it again down here with just a variety of inputs, three in total. Let me run it and then I'll open up test one and there will be a link in the video description to test one so you can see that code as well. All right, when there are zero inputs or arguments, arguments is just a phrase for how many inputs to the function. So zero arguments, this is what displays out. And where this comes from is if I open up test one.m, so a very basic function header, nothing is returned. I have one variable in the parentheses here that I've named var arg in, and that variable is going to be a cell array. I'm going to use int to string of nargin, which is a built-in MATLAB feature, to display how many input arguments there are. There are zero. I'll display out var argin. Well, it's blank, nothing. I'll use cell display on it. Well, again, blank. I'll just have it be raw right here. And it says, oh, it's a zero by zero empty cell array. Okay, cool. And then I could also loop through it, and I could access each of the values in turn using curly brackets. But that one's also empty because there's nothing in it. But if we go back and run the code where there's three inputs, we get something quite different. All right, so there are three arguments. The nargin was able to detect that right here. When I just use display, I get this output right here. When I use cell display or cell disp, I get this right here. So three inputs to var argin, just in the order that they were passed in. Here's what it looks like raw. It's very similar to the DISP. And then here's what it looks like when I use the loop. And that's partly just review of loops. There's nothing special about this with relation to the cell array. Also, I just wanted to emphasize, though, that like this is a very normal indexing. It's just like vector indexing. It's just using curly brackets instead of parentheses. So I think that's kind of cool. You could write your own function with a variable number of inputs and access them as you normally would, but with curly brackets and perhaps display them out if that's your thing. But this is just a test example uh, as indicated. Now, cell arrays are not the only way to group up data of different types. Uh, another option is structures, but that is going to be the very next video because I want to keep the videos short. So uh, go on to that one now.